Last week, my ovarian cyst was causing tremendous pain. I called my doctor's office and pleaded with them to have my surgery moved up. I could not wait 10 weeks for surgery. The nurse at the doctor's office went above and beyond for me. After doing an extensive search, she found a medical center with an available operating room. The surgery was scheduled to take place in four and a half weeks. Although the surgery room was tentatively booked, the doctor had to agree to the new surgery time and location. If he did not agree to this, I would have my original surgery, which was slated to occur in 10 weeks. I patiently waited to hear back from the doctor. This week, the nurse called me. She told me my surgery date would be in one week. She stated the doctor was very concerned about the size and rapid growth of my ovarian cyst. He wanted the surgery to happen as soon as possible. I then became panicked. I had been sent paperwork which contained an extensive list of things which had to be done before surgery. The most important one was having an appointment with my primary care physician to get medical clearance for surgery. Everything was to be submitted one week prior to surgery. I told the receptionist, today is one week before surgery. I cannot get everything submitted today. She said they would give me a few days to get everything in. The call ends. In a frenzy, I call my primary care doctor's office. I am informed my doctor is out of the office this week, but I can have an appointment to see one of his colleagues. The receptionist asks if I can come in for a 3 p.m. appointment today. I eagerly say yes. At my appointment, the doctor sees on my medical chart I have a cardiologist. He tells me I need to get medical clearance from the cardiologist before I have surgery. I ask why. I do not have any heart issues. Furthermore, it will take four to six weeks to get an appointment to see the cardiologist. I cannot wait that long to get medical clearance. My surgery is next week. My primary care doctor tells me he will ask his supervisor if I have to see the cardiologist. A short while later, the doctor returns. He tells me his supervisor said if my EKG is normal, then I do not need to see the cardiologist. The doctor summons the nurse. I have an EKG done. The doctor looks at the printout of the EKG and says it is normal. The doctor says if my blood work is normal, then he will write up a medical clearance letter. The appointment ends. During the entire visit, I am looking at the clock and am praying for things to move rapidly. The laboratory closes at 4.30. As soon as the doctor says I can leave, I flee as fast as I can to the car. Quickly, I arrive at the laboratory. I check in. It is a few minutes after 4 p.m. I am quickly taken back to a room to have my blood work drawn. The technician inputs my insurance information and doctor's orders into the computer. Another assistant draws my blood while the other technician logs everything into the computer. As the technician is inputting the information, she tells me there is no diagnosis code on my lab orders. I cannot have the blood work done unless I have a diagnosis code. I ask if I can call the clinic and write down the code on my lab orders. The technician says that would be fine. I leave the laboratory and frantically call the clinic. I praise God someone answers the phone. I explain to the receptionist I need a diagnosis code for my lab work. The lab closes in 16 minutes. The receptionist types up a message to the nurse. The call ends. As I sit, I am absolutely panicked. I need to have the blood work done today. The blood work has to be sent to a central lab to be processed. It will not be resulted until the following day. Today is Wednesday. If I have to come back tomorrow, which is Thursday, the lab results will not be available until Friday. My doctor's office is closed on Fridays. This means the lab work will not be reviewed by my doctor until Monday. The surgeon's office has requested that they receive the medical clearance by 5 p.m. on Friday.
If I cannot have the blood work done today, my surgery will be canceled. I watch as the minutes tick by. At 4.24 p.m., the phone rings. It is a nurse from the clinic. She tells me the diagnosis code. I scribble it down on the doctor's orders. I thank the nurse. I bolt into the laboratory. I wave my doctor's orders at the woman behind the front desk. She takes the piece of paper and gives it to her colleague. I am taken back to her room. The technician inputs my information again. The diagnosis code works for two of my tests, but the third test will not be covered by my insurance based on the diagnosis code provided by my doctor's office. The technician says she will not do the tests. I can go to my doctor's office and get a different diagnosis code to get the third test covered by my insurance. I can come back tomorrow and have the blood work drawn then. A sheet is printed by the computer stating how much I would have to pay for the third test since it will not be covered by my insurance. The technician is about to throw away the sheet in the trash when I snatch the piece of paper out of her hand. I read the cost is only $105. I tell the woman I will pay the money to have the third test done today. I sign a form agreeing to the cost. Since my blood was already drawn during my previous visit, I am free to leave. When I get to the car, I am shaking from exhaustion and I break down in tears. I thank God for allowing everything to work out. I also rejoice that the test was only $105. Do not get me wrong, $105 is a lot of money. But if that is the difference between getting my medical clearance in on time and having surgery or having the surgery canceled, I will gladly pay $105. The next day at 12.40 p.m., the phone rings. It is my doctor. He tells me he has reviewed my lab results. He will write up a medical clearance letter and submit it to the surgeon's office by the end of the day. When the call ends, I feel as though a huge burden has been lifted from my shoulders. I am going to have surgery. I cannot believe it. I break down in tears and profusely thank God. In a short time span, I went from having surgery in 10 weeks to having surgery next week. What a miracle. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.